when you look back at the tape today or maybe on the way home or, or this morning, mm-hmm. was there anything that you could really pinpoint as to maybe why some of the offensive line issues were there or why some of yeah. maybe Marcus's struggles were there a little bit more? Sure. I think when you look back on it, like the thing that um, we weren't very clean operating, and I think you get in a game like that, you know, they they held the ball for a long period of time. You know, we held them, uh, you know, situations of field goals there. But I think sometimes you start pressing, and uh, which we really hadn't done a lot of this year, but uh, it was magnified yesterday. You could see it all over the place. And, uh, you know, we just got to be cleaner operationally. Uh, nobody needs to do more than what their job is. And, and sometimes you got to understand when the journey's over. And uh, I, I thought last night, and a lot of that, you know, I gave Carolina credit. Um, but I thought we pressed too much at times to try to, you know, whether you want to call it providing a spark or make a play that necessarily wasn't there. And I, I know I asked this last night, but it's now, you know, about 20, well, I guess, what, 16 or so hours after. Is Marcus still your starting quarterback? Like, you know, here's why. I think those questions sometimes are comical and has nothing. And I understand why you got to ask them. It's one of the things that will get a headline to, to put your articles in the link economy, you know, and uh, it's an important position. But our feeling about every position is we're objective and we've done the same thing all year. We evaluate everything week to week and there will always be competition. And it's our job to make sure we're doing the right thing for the team, whether it's at left guard, uh, you know, kicker, punter, safety, corner, uh, the L5 on kickoff, you know, the right guard on punt. We're going to look at everything every week and we're going to try to keep competition going. And so I, you can try to pin me down. You can ask it seven different ways. And I'm going to give you the same line that we've been using all year. But I understand the question. I understand why you ask because it's, that, it's about the quarterback and, and that's a premium job in this in this league. It's what drives attention and eyeballs and certainly clicks. But that's that's the truth, Mike, and that's what we do every week. If I could just slip one more in, what is it that has given you the confidence that Marcus is – what What has he done to week over week solidify that role for you? Mike, you can keep asking different ways. I'm going to tell you the same thing. We evaluate everything every day, every week. It's our job to make sure we're doing the best thing for the team short term and long term so can i ask a third time no i'm all right okay all right thanks thanks Josh. I, this will sound like a third time to you but it's I, I, maybe come at it from a different angle does the fact that you've got extra days allow you to take a breath and evaluate everything more whether it's the quarterback or the you know left guard or whatever special teams position um, you know, you, you got to make sure it's part of our job, Josh, uh, whether you're on a short week or you got extra days that you're always, you know, looking for ways to improve uh, everywhere. You know, what we're doing schematically, um, you know, personnel wise, you know, your self scout, which, you know, that used to be the old adage, you know, you, people waited to the buy. I, I don't know anybody that's doing that anymore because of the amount of data you're able to get at, at such a fast clip now. And the way that the business has gone, um, and the amount of help that you have, I think it's a pretty standard issue that every team, their self scouts, or that information comes a lot quicker. So that's something you do every week. So you're trying to stay on top of it. Um, you know, the reality is where well, we've been going, you know, through training camp and now after 10 games, I mean, we're middle of November and we haven't had our buy yet. You know, it shows you the clip we've been going. So hopefully the next couple of days, there's a lot of things that you can reflect back on. And um, as bad as this feels, you know, losing those two games in, in five days is uh, you're still in it. You know, it's the way that everything is set up right now. And uh, there's opportunity and we got to get back to work and find a way to beat Chicago. Thanks, Arthur. Thank you. Zach? You mentioned not even the bye. You still got three more games before the bye. Uh, so how much of this uh, extra time off will you allow the guys just to get away, get a little bit healthier than they are normally at this point of the year, um, you know, with the bye still almost a month away? Yeah, I mean, it's you try to 
you know, if this Thursday night game happened week three, you'd, you'd probably have Zach you'd have a little bit different approach. But where we're at right now, I think it's for our players, not just physically, I think mentally a couple of days will be good for them. Um, certainly our tempo will slow down, not having to play on Sunday, but a lot of you try to get ahead from Chicago and the back to what I was talking about with Josh, you know, maybe, maybe you get a little extra sleep and a little more clear headed and you can look at it again and um, just try to find better solutions. Patrick. Joe. Nothing, Joe. Michael, anything else? Yeah, sure. Far away. Uh, uh, yeah, no, I know. I thought I'd have a little more time. Um, when you look at kind of the defensive performance the last couple of weeks as well, what, is where where is I guess the some of the breakdowns maybe in kind of finishing the pass rush and the pressures that you guys are trying to deliver? I mean everything different. You know the, the Chargers were a different challenge, right? They did they on brand. They they led the league in um, pass attempts per game, and they almost hit that mark. And uh, Justin Herbert hasn't taken a lot of sacks, right? Uh, like you had 10 for the year, the amount of dropbacks they're doing, it's, it's a testament to him and the line and how quickly he's getting that ball out. So some of them, it's not like he's back there on seven-step drops and holding it either. Uh, so there's a lot of different different obstacles. And yesterday, you know, they were they ran ran the ball. Uh, they popped a few of them, but, you know, they ate a lot of the clock too. And then they did hit a play pass or two uh, off the, you know, off the action. You know, they had the explosive after we scored the uh, – when it became 13-9, right, the one they had to marshal um, off off a of play action, and we got to do a better job tackling that. That became an explosive and allowed them to go down and, and score again. So, you know, that was probably the most rushing attempts we've had in a while, and uh, they kind of just stayed with it. And it was 2-3, and then, you know, they had a couple 4-5, and then they popped 12, 15-yard run, give or take care there, and then they uh, – Able to hit a hit a big pass like that and punch one in that way, and then they hit the one on the bubble screen uh, that we were out leveraged the first touchdown. So it's a completely different games, Mike. You know, so there's that's just a microcosm of how different the issues are week to week and sometimes series to series. Uh, you mentioned obviously at the start, kind of starting to press, and that you guys haven't really done that this year. Mm -hmm. Because of that, did you kind of feel like it was a snowball thing yesterday a little bit in every phase? I never thought it was a snowball, but I thought felt that it um, slowed us down at times. Uh, where, you know, early when you we you had a ability to probably take a lead, that second drive you get down there and uh, for whatever reasons, I mean, then you know you get pushed back and penalties or negative plays for different reasons where I think really hurt us. And then I think it. it you know, you get the ball and it's it's a low scoring game, and you get back there too, and you you know you rush some things and you get another penalty the first drive you got, and then finally we got something going. Yeah, I, I did. You know, because there was plenty of possessions left even before Hodges touchdown, and uh, that that's what that's what I mean by that. that we got to understand because when you take a look at it, as ugly as it felt at times, we still got the ball back down seven with a chance to go win it. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Josh, anything else? Um, this will feel a little, a little philosophical to you probably, but is there any value in the fact that this was a dud across all three phases that there was, you know, that, you know, we're all in this together. That was, you yeah. Know. Yeah. I mean, Josh. Yeah. I mean, because, um, it just proves, you know, the, the challenge every week that if you're how hard it is, you know, how competitive this league is, that you, you've you got to focus. It's the hardest thing to do over 17 games is to not ride the the roller coaster. you got a short week. you got to flip it. And obviously Carolina did that better than we did. They come, they're coming off a tough loss to us in a wild game two weeks ago, or not even two weeks ago, when they go out to Cincinnati – and uh, it was ugly. And they came back and prideful men over there and they got 
they got some really good players up front and they got they got off and they we didn't start very well and it, and that game got got going a divisional game and um I thought they won both lines of scrimmage so it proves your point no matter what you did the week before or two weeks before you've got to bring it every single game and that focus has to be there if you want to sustain any amount of success in this league because the challenge is regardless of record is uh is high and that's what i love about the nfl and i I under different subject um well different from my first question i understand it can be difficult to evaluate a a backup quarterback in season the way things are work but how do you feel about desmond where desmond is and what he's done since you know the beginning of the season same way i feel about a lot of our young guys you know we um well you have to get them ready to play you know cornell armstrong guy was in camp it's injured. We bring him back. You know, he has to start a couple of games. Um, everybody we've tried to develop on your roster, where they've been on practice squad, Kukowski, you know, now he's up and playing well on special teams. You know, that's our that's our job. You know, Colby Gossett, guys had to start some games at left guard. Uh, you know, play primarily on the right side. That's our job. I mean, we we we're here to develop every player on the roster. So I feel the same way about all all the guys we got. Thanks, Arthur. Thank you. Zach? Yeah, Arthur, just the um, the fine line between extending plays, trying to make something the most out of nothing, and, and pressing. Because we've seen countless times Marcus stay on his feet, spin out of something, flick a pass to Cordero in space, to, you know, extend a play. Uh, is the pressing, is it just like a mental lapse where there's nothing there and then the, the individual just tries to make something out of nothing kind of a thing? It's What's that fine line that you're okay with, I guess? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, obviously, you don't want to take somebody's initiative away, but what you what you don't want to do, and there's different reasons, right? I mean, guy may be open, you may somebody loses up front one on one, you may have to protect some breakdown, and so you know you you're trying to extend the plays and and uh, you're pressing and you maybe you try to rush a decision that or something that's not there, and it's it is a fine line because there's times where you've been able to extend plays and. That creativity is is a lot of some opportunities, and you see that around the league. Whether you're looking at quarterback play, whether you're looking at Kansas City or Buffalo, where they the, you'll see Josh Allen or Patrick Mahomes do that, and it works out well. But what you can't do is when you're pressing and you know you're you're going and extending it, and not realizing when that journey's over. That that's where the fine line is. 